Dolly Parton once said, it costs a lot of money to look this cheap. People think theatrical makeup, hair, and costumes must be expensive to look good, but it's certainly not the case. Our guest today, Shay Coulee, describes herself as a little bit of bougie and a little bit banji. Either way, she's 100% fierce. Listen as Shay joins us to take a look at Pollo Del Mar's tips on saving money for queens and anyone else who wants to look like a million bucks but only has the loose change under their sofa to spend on drag. Plus, who is the ultimate black supermodel? Tyra or Naomi? Why life isn't over for gay men when they reach 30. A judge rules that John Travolta's alleged gay ex-lover can write a tell-all book. And a poll reveals that Darth Vader is more popular than Hillary Clinton and Mike Huckabee. I'm Fausto Fernos. I'm Mark Fillion. And this is Feast of Fun. From the creators of Feast of Fun comes Cooking with Drag Queens, a new web series that combines two of America's favorite pastimes, drag and eating. See your favorite queens and some sizzling new gals channel their inner June Cleaver without the beaver on this delicious new cooking show. But like the podcast, it can only happen with your support. Watch the video and share it with your friends at tinyurl.com slash cooking with drag queens. Our guest today is the fierce and fabulous Shay Coulee, who describes herself as a little bit of bougie and a little bit of banji. For those of you who don't speak uh, Huntonese, <laughs> the drag queen language, it's half aristocrat and half ghetto. Welcome to Feast of Fun. Yeah, hey guys. <laughs> Ooh, you really like accentuated the T's on ghetto. Ghetto, ghetto. fabulous, darling. Bambougie, you know, bambougie. Is it bambougie Bouge, or bouge-banji? Bouge-banji? Just bougie and banji. Why do you, why do you describe Get yourself as half banji and half bougie? What what does that come from? Well, I think it kind of comes from I think my 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 parents, my dad grew up very very poor working class. My grandpa, he was he worked in a factory and my grandmother, she was a wet nurse. So if you guys don't know what She that was is. a wet nurse? Mm-hmm. Not a dry one. So yeah, she used to breastfeed little white babies. Oh, shit. Yeah, really? And like clean their houses. Yeah, have you seen the help? Like have you seen that movie? Can yeah. we say the M word? Is that uh, so Ma- allowed? She was what? no. Well, well Mammy, is right. that she was is that what she did she describe herself as that or she didn't describe herself as a mammy. She just described herself as the help. She's like, here's my tits. She's just like, I gotta feed these fucking babies because their moms are so busy popping black beauties and still not cleaning or doing shit. So, so uh, uh, you as a modern young gay black man, mm-hmm. and when you get a sense of this like heritage that you have and and the struggles that your family had in the past, does it humble you in some ways or? Oh yeah, because you have a really good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. You do. Well, oh you're God, not nursing you. little white babies, I or know. maybe you are. You're a fierce drag queen who <laughs> um, gets to those are the bottoms dress up like home. Beyonce <laughs> and dance pretty. I gotta say, people, for the, if you guys haven't seen Shea Coulee's videos, go to our website, feastofun.com. We're gonna post of one of the videos, and that's the one that's making the rounds right now. It was like you and two girls who are backup dancers for you, and you uh-huh. guys are flawless. Fierce, fierce choreography. Thank you so much. Uh, those backup dances are, um, one is Po Chop. She's a really amazing burlesque performer here in Chicago. She tours. And then the other is a drag queen named Shalice, who is uh, amazing. Really so, so only one of those women have uteruses? Yes, only one is a biological woman. Wow. Yeah, we call ourselves the chocolate trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name. It it's is. time to take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you look at uh, and think about like your family's background it's like in some ways you're like wow I've come a long way yeah I mean I've come a long way my life has been a downward spiral but my parents they really did a great job (laughs) they did a really amazing job of like building themselves up and you know because when my parents are uh, a bit older uh, than like most of my friends they're in their 60s Mm -hmm. I'm the youngest of five kids and so you know when they were coming around you know is during like the civil rights movement, you know, so they were the first in their families to go to college, you know, earn degrees. And so they really, really worked hard to try and 
provide a life for my siblings and I that they themselves, you know, didn't quite have. Now, my mom, on the other hand, she was bougie. My dad, he was he was bougie. My mom, she is bougie. She, you know, my grandpa, he had a really great job. Well, he was also half white, so he was really passable. So he was able to get a lot of, you know, better paying jobs than my uh, paternal grandfather. Wasn't he a butler at the White House? <laughs> Shut your ass up. <laughs> Shut your ass up. Uh, what, no. is, what does Jackie say? What does so he, he, rah, he, worked, <laughs> he worked alongside with white people. He didn't pick up after them. Um, but no, he had a good job in my grandmother. She was an ex- um, entertainer she was a tap dancer uh who you know worked at the counter at uh uh not sax but one of those department stores back in the day but you know now when, your dad is a military man yes and he, he comes also from a line of military men yes mm -hmm. and he was hoping that all his sons would grow up to be military guys as well right yeah that didn't work out in his favor so when you came out as gay and as a drag queen and and all the stuff to your family what was their kind of reaction did they shit their pants they shit their pants didn't they um, <laughs> yeah a little bit well my coming out story was not cute first of all my mom's a minister um so when she's not like working her job as like a, a case manager she you know is preaching in the pulpit you know and whatnot what church is that shiloh missionary baptist church in lock Port, Illinois. Is it a conservative church or what does um, it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Funny well, sometimes enough, Baptists aren't yeah. always conservative. They're actually not very conservative for a Baptist yeah. church. There, I mean, like when I was going to church there, and I was like a young budding little homosexual. Like, I mean, I tried to keep my flamingness at like a nice conservative level when I went to church, at least in the way <laughs> that I dressed and like carried myself. But I mean, if you could see the little homosexuals at my church now when I go back wearing like leopard print tuxedo slippers and like blonde hair and like are they just, all in the choir you know they are <laughs> on the choir on the dance team praise them and so during like intermission or i guess or uh, they they have a dance off in the parking lot and a dance off <laughs> no girl you gotta pray over that shit <laughs> do you ever do those dance offs on halstead street dance offs on halstead street yeah. no girl because i'm getting paid <laughs> The fuck I'm gonna do dancing stage. with somebody in the street, bitch. Like I'm in the club. You see dollars. those dance off though that that had in Boys Town. Yeah, those are really like. I mean, I've seen some pretty fierce dancing. In yeah, that girl, stuff. it's quite the cultural experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, because people are like, look at all this culture this happening Chicagoans on this street in their, right in their now. Habitat. Well, this is what's been happened in Chicago. In, what did we say? The fast five to ten years, mm -hmm. uh, the the gay neighborhood has gotten much more racially diverse. And some oh. people are like, yeah, bring it on. And other people are like, there's black children outside. They're going to rob me. I mean, they might rob you. That, that is Maybe they should rob you. <laughs> but yeah, I know people get a little bit way too nervous yeah, I about like, I mean, especially now that they have like the North, the North Halstead security on there. I just love watching them just go up to like groups of black people that are like having a cigarette outside of Roscoe's like you can't exist on this corner right now. Stop mm. standing here. You mm. can't exist here. Sorry. You're making people nervous because you're way too dark and you're standing on a corner. What do they really say to them though? You can't exist here you can't be here no, well, they, they say, say you, you gotta can't, move on yeah you gotta move you gotta move you can't stand here you gotta move and like it's clear that they are like it'll be a group of friends that are standing outside the bar conversing just like any other group of friends who mm -hmm. stepped out for like a cigarette I, yeah. but you know they're like you guys look like you might be rowdy and we're kind of concerned you know what the solution to this problem is is turn them into a tourist attraction um, in Japan, <laughs> black people. Well, the the, the teenagers, the young, the youth, the Harajuku, the Harajuku youth. In in, in Japan, mm -hmm. a lot of the youth culture, they they're they're broke ass bitches. Mm -hmm. But especially in Japan, which it takes a lot of money just to sneeze. Girl, yeah, a Japan's... Big Mac costs thirty dollars. Yeah, so these yeah. kids f dig shit out of the garbage can and they make themselves like these amazing outfits and they stand there on on the little on the bridge on the bridge or on the uh, just in the public spaces. And tourists comes up and they say, "Can I take have my picture taken with you?" And they say, "Yeah, it'll be like fifty yen." Mm -hmm. And so, like, I think a lot of the black teenagers that are already dressed to the nines on Halstead Street should, if they're listening to this, you know, dress up a little more extravagant and then have the tourists take pictures of what charge the tourists to take pictures of like Spider-Man. So the tourists Superman. can come up and be like, hey, guess what? I went to Chicago and I met a black person. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's amazing. So. I mean, they could try, but I don't know many people that are that excited to just try to take pictures with black people. If if, um, if someone was able to like dress up like RuPaul, like you know how like Spider Man and Batman and mm-hmm. the. You know, when they take their masks off, it's like mm-hmm. some slump underneath. If somebody was able to dress up like RuPaul and stand on the street corner mm-hmm. of Halsa Street, and it's like they might like actually like make some serious coin, and the bars will be like, "No, you're gonna, I'm gonna pay you to stand in front of my bar." Yeah, well, in order to dress like RuPaul and look like RuPaul, you'd also have to pass the paper bag test. So that's something <laughs> you gotta do as well. Well, which so, half of us can't do. So one thing that you do really extraordinarily well is look like a supermodel. Uh, you know, serving up Beyonce Thank realness. You. I don't look like Beyonce, but that's really sweet of you. Well, you have. I'm not. I'm not saying you look like Beyonce, but you're a very oh, like so sophisticated. You're not? <laughs> <laughs> but you're very sophisticated and very extravagant. And thank you. And like talking to you, I would never picture that the Shea Kool Aid and you out of drag are the same person. I know. It you have a real people, transformation. It takes people a while to figure it out because they're like, wait, I've seen Jaren. And I've seen Shay, but I've never seen them in the same room together <laughs> at the same time. Because you're lovers. I think that they might be the same person. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to talk about drag on a dime today with you. Yeah, so, girl story of my life. Because you have a lot of really interesting money-saving tips for drag. And uh, also our friend Pollo Del Mar, who's a San Francisco queen and video blogger, uh, she put together a video mm-hmm. on tips, drag on a dime, and um, I wanted to run this list by you and see if you agree or you have your own kind of options or ideas. Okay, yeah. I, I guess my first like drag um, on a dime, like money saving tip would be not to do drag as your full time job. <laughs> <laughs> do it that, as a hobby, that's as a the, side gig. Yeah, because uh, I do drag full time. It's my full time gig, and it's the worst decision I've ever made in my life. Well, is it financially? Hard, is it hard to have another job and do drag? Uh, like, can you work? Like, you know, what's Bianca Del Rio said? She what? I work every day in New York, and every night I work. You yeah, because okay, she was involved in like uh, the theater garment industry as a yeah. costume maker, and it makes it so because that's actually what, where my background comes from. I graduated from uh, Columbia College with a degree in theater costume design. Now, how she was able to make that work, um, I'm really not quite sure. I'm sure she's probably working with some like equity Lots of theater. Co- yeah, like <laughs> she's probably working with some equity theater company where she was like working days, but you know the. Way way that the Chicago landscape works, it's a lot of storefront theater. Mm-hmm. So as a costume designer, the majority of the time you're working nights because, you know, you're at tech and dress rehearsals. And then when that's done, then you have to take costumes back home and do alterations. And that's actually kind of how I fell into drag because I was working close to like 200 hours on a project and getting a $200 stipend. And I'm like, there's got to be more to life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so, um, what? I mean, so that was you're like, I'm off. gonna take a couple of these costumes and that I'm making for other people and turn it into drag. Um, like essentially, I kind of already had like a drag wardrobe kind of already like building up because I would just kind of find things that I liked personally, and then I would just never give them back to like the theater company like <laughs> things that I would like buy you know when I was like out shopping on their dime and yeah oh yeah um, theater companies have so much right? money you just no they don't it. they're like here here's your $25 <laughs> budget so I would oh, just like you me, know, know it would be well, like that's a why you don't have a job there. anymore because you were like stealing <laughs> they're, like, they're like she robbed us um, <laughs> okay so let's uh, um, Pollo Lamar's advice uh, is real mostly focused on makeup because makeup is gonna the thing that's gonna eat your money fast more than outfits is that is that is that right? Do you, think? you agree? Disagree? Uh, makeup is pretty makeup because I feel like makeup is the thing that you have to replenish the most. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's you wear it and then you wash it off and you wear. You know, it. You know what I'm you saying? Don't get to wear, can't you scrape it I off know. and save it? If only I could just <laughs> save my face. Well, you know what they do have now? They do have those. Uh, they have lace uh, eyebrows, so you don't yeah. have to necessarily paint your eyebrows anymore. You can get lace front eyebrows made and pull, put those on, and I think you can wear them up to like. 50 or 100 times but I don't know if they'll stick over makeup yeah I mean I don't know well I just like to draw my eyebrows mm-hmm. on anyway because then you can create like different shapes right. like I mean I shave off my eyebrows just for the sake of drag and I really love what oh so you bought work. into the hype that RuPaul tells everybody's like you're not serious about being a drag queen unless you shave those eyebrows I mean it works for because you know what I feel like 
out of drag, like not wearing eyebrows, I don't think that I look weird, but some people mm. need their eyebrows. Well, do you draw eyebrows on when you're, no? No. Mm-mm. No. Courtney because they just said, smudge off. Courtney yeah. Axe said on the yeah. show that one of the reasons why she didn't win RuPaul's Drag Race, or I'm sorry, she didn't say this on the show. She said it in, in private to us, but I'll tell oh, you anyway. On the show, <laughs> uh, is that that you know, RuPaul sat her down and said, "Why aren't you shaving your eyebrows off?" It's like, well, because I have a sex life and. <laughs> <laughs> I like to get dick and I can't get dick with no eyebrows. Bitch, I get trade with no eyebrows, Courtney. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, so uh, Poyo Lamar's first advice is go to the hardware store and buy buckets of paint and use that as foundation. <laughs> Glidden. Um, <laughs> Bad advice. I mean, or good advice. if you. you hate your pores and uh, you want to look like a fucking shellacked piece of shit, then yeah, go right on ahead and do paint. Uh, in the background right now, I have to point this out, they're doing construction she's on the on, street. Yeah, on her makeup. <laughs> they're using <laughs> trucks and <laughs> shovels to, mm-hmm. to pour that stuff on to shake the They're actually uh, hired these people to come and dig the blackheads out of my pores. And that's what you hear going if you on hear right a now, just scraping. Like, oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, seriously, the first advice is she says uh, um, a lot of people waste their money on brushes. That actually, um, instead of spending expensive, uh, buying expensive brushes which are soft and feathery, you can actually buy artist brushes, which are ex- exactly the same thing. Um, or you can buy brush kits at ma- arts and craft stores. Don't shop at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, they hate women. <laughs> they hate everybody. And they hate contraception, and they hate people and um, that but these cheap brushes actually are great because they give you an idea how the brushes work and which ones serve the best function for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually I I agree that artists brush it because uh, I, since I have a history in art and like painting, like I kind of already had like a knowledge of what brushes do and. Uh, you go to like makeup stores like Mac and they sell them like one by one and they're really expensive, mm-hmm. you know? So girls try and like build this kit and they're using like five brushes trying to do like an entire phase because they spent like $10 on each brush. Really amazing starter kit that I recommend to everybody. Uh, it's a brand called Coastal Scents. You can find them on Amazon. It's a 22 brush set. Uh, I've like already purchased two of them. Um, they're really, really great. They're synthetic brushes. They're not natural hair, which tends to absorb makeup. And it's like 20 I want to say that it's like $24 for the set, and they're mm. amazing. Ooh. I recommend it to everybody. Save money, money saving offers. Money saved, $50. There you go. <laughs> well, the other thing, too, that I've done is I've, I've gone to the MAC cosmetic store or a makeup counter, mm-hmm. pulled out my cell phone, mm-hmm. and taken a picture of the makeup brush that I want to buy. Mm-hmm. And then I go to the arts and crafts store mm-hmm. and buy the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Artif- <laughs> Artificial for like half the price. Yeah. It's exactly the same I, brush. I, I use, but do cheap brushes sub- work as well as nice brushes? Um, Typically, no. But this brand that I'm talking about, mm-hmm. they have really good brushes. So that's why I support them. And I recommend actually, them Actually, sometimes everybody. those artists' brushes are actually better quality than the makeup brushes that you buy. Because a drag mm-hmm. queen uses a lot of makeup as opposed to like a woman that's going for that daytime that, realness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you need stuff that's got to pick it up and... Put so you on. want the nylon, you want the synthetic hair. Okay, yeah. so moving on, uh, cheap powder is uh, sometimes just as good as cheap powder. But my warning about that is, um, if use your cell phone again, take a flash photo of the powder on your skin. If the powder reflects the light, mm-hmm. you're going to look a little boogery when someone takes your picture. Otherwise, um, Poyo Lamar says, Cody Airspun powder is way cheaper and then a lot of the stuff that they sell at Mac Cosmetics, which is around fifty dollars for oh, a little fuck. thing. Oh god damn. Fifty dollars for a powder. My lunch costs fifty dollars. The fuck? Okay, well you can <laughs> I use I use um for my powder, I use uh just neutral set. Um, I know, like... You use the neutral set from, like, Ben Nye and, like, mm-hmm, Krylon and mm-hmm, that stuff? Mm-hmm. But that's, like, almost, like, white, but 
translucent. Yeah, right? it's like a translucent powder. And I know most people are like, but you're so dark. How does that work? Well, that's why it's called neutral set translucent powder because it goes. It, oh, does it matter what skin or skin tone you have? Does it matter it'll, because it'll go yeah, it. it'll now, go. And does it because you know sometimes you see those actresses on the red carpet mm -hmm. and they have like weird powder on their nose or on their side yeah. and because it, it's reflection mm -hmm. from the from that flash like Fausto was mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. Do, that doesn't happen with that. No. Also, a really good thing about being a black girl, especially when you pose in photos with white girls, you absorb all the light, so all of them look like ghosts. And then your face is just <laughs> flawless, uh, flawless. So when they hit everyone with that flash, yeah. like all you see on them are like their like eyes, their nose, and their mm -hmm. mouth. And you see all my contours. <laughs> you see every highlight. Yeah. I get right in the middle, and I'm like, "Hey, girl! Oh my god! Did that photo really blast your face out like that? Sorry." Have you seen a Star Booty with RuPaul's movie Star Booty? You can watch it on Netflix. There's mm -hmm. a scene where she's right next to her friend Lahoma Van Sant, no. <laughs> and Lahoma Van Sant looks like Casper yes. the Ghost next to her. It's hysterical. And Star Booty just looking flawless. Yeah. Girl, I love it. Why is Latrice Royale then, uh, especially early on in her career, I think she like got her makeup sorted out, uh -huh. but for a while it was just like, it wasn't working for her. Because I, I noticed that mean? a lot of young black drag queens, they're, they're, they're highlighting. Highlighting is when the, the parts of your face where you uh, lighten. lighten. Mm -hmm. And then contouring is the parts of your face that you darken in mm -hmm. order to give the illusion a feminine illusion. Mm -hmm. And for her, like she was using the wrong colors, and it was making it look like Orange? orangey her. and and gray, and it was like it just looked wrong. So let me tell all you black drag queens. Out Are there, you talking to Coco Montries too? Listen, yes, just <laughs> all Mr. of you guys, Just listen Dust. to your homegirl Shay. Sienna powder, banana powder. Don't use them. Don't use what them. What is sienna powder and banana powder? They're colors. Okay. Um, sienna is, it's, it's, is that like, that orange look? It's that orange, you know, because, um, like, so sienna like, burnt sienna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you have like girls, you know, like white girls that use the air spun. It has like a little bit of a pinkish tint to it. So, you know, because people think like setting powders, it should have some type of like tone to it that mm -hmm. resembles like a skin tone, whatever. A lot of black girls use banana powder for their highlight, but you don't want to do that because the banana powder cancels out the color. And, it, and, it, and it's also like different techniques. Like mm -hmm. I do most of my color contouring and highlighting with creams. I don't do it with powders. I do all of it with like creams, blend the creams, and then I just set everything with like uh, a neutral okay. set. And then I go and then just kind of like cut it a little bit more with like contour powders. But neutral set is your best friend because it doesn't distort colors. Like it keeps everything the way so that you want to see it. So what are African-American drag queens trying to do with that orange? Because like, you know, what, what, I, what I think Roxanne, trying, was, was it Roxanne or was like going to Coco and say, you look orange, it was girl. Alyssa, it was it was like a dusted Dorito. You look like something. a Dorito. Look at how orange your face looks. Well, I think because um, the their biggest concern because they think uh, uh, neutral set because it's white will make them look ashy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, girl, no, you don't want to look ashy, but no. it's like once you apply, you know, with your big powder puff and like beat all that neutral set in, you go back with a blending brush and then you dust the excess off and you don't look ashy and then you warm your face up with uh, blush. Mm -hmm. You know, like I use for my blush color, I actually use like this really, really, it's actually orange. It's a really, really bright <laughs> so orange. So you are using orange. I am using orange, but that's like the tiny <laughs> little bit of. Take it back what you said to them. Take it back. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes I use pink. So, um, or if you're out of that, uh, Capoya Lamar suggests that you get a bag of hot Doritos or Cool Ranch Cheetos and just uh, cool eat Ranch it. Cheetos. And then just rub the, the dust, Cheeto dust on your cheeks. Girl, I'm, I'm, I mean, <laughs> that's just a joke. You can try. <laughs> okay, uh, she uh, cheap lashes and lash glue. This is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Dollar stores sell cheap eyelashes for a dollar, which is kind of an obvious thing. But she recommends actually for the drag queen that's working all the time to use weave glue. Yes. Instead of eyelash glue because it's much cheaper. Yes. Does it come in like a bigger tube or yes, something? Yes, it does. Um, uh, they call it track glue. Mm -hmm. And it's and the thing that's good about it is like you can get like a little bottle that's like this big that you get a lot of and it's about like a dollar ninety nine at a hair supply store. Lash glue you go and it's like three or four dollars for this teeny tiny like little tube of lash glue and the and the track glue is black and mm -hmm. it's stronger and it's stronger and it dries quicker. Like honestly, when you put that lash on with that track glue, you like just place it on there and that bitch is like. Pah! 
you know, she's on there, you know, as to where like lash glue, she'll be like sliding around and you're like trying to put, and you look like, like Gia Gunn. Put, <laughs> I'm Asian. I can't help it. <laughs> Kim, she's like, that's not an excuse. <laughs> I thought it was weird. Michelle Kim Visage Chi's was lash like, game is on point oh all the time. Oh my God. I was, you, I was like, when Michelle Visage was trying to say it was because she was Asian, I was looking at her like, okay, mm. Michelle, if you think so, if you think so. Girl, and, and so have so, you tried dollar store uh, eyelashes? Yes, but girl, right. no, they're no. too small. You well, know, there's a, I mean, there's you can one still drag stack queen, lashes, but Vice Squiggy Bones, uh, who nobody knows except us, <clears throat> and she sent a uh, wonderful cooking with drag queens uh, testimonial. Um, you're in the in the testimonials as well. Who's that? Who? Uh, Shea Kool Aid. What? <laughs> and she, uh, uh, her drag approach is just to take construction paper. Uh, and uh, cut it up, and she glues it onto her eyelash eyelashes, and it's it's an interesting look. Um, Actually, a construction paper lashes fierce as fuck. You know, like because yeah. sometimes if you, I mean, you can. That's the I think that's like one of the beauties and the joy about like drag makeup. You can do so many things, mm -hmm. and like I mean, you look at fashion editorials and think about like the ways that they do makeup, and like you can create a really graphic lash using construction paper oh, and wow. cut it into any type of shape that you want. You can make eyebrows out of construction paper and just glue those on top of your. You know what I'm saying? Like you can yeah. do a lot with paper. Paper is fun to play with. with I makeup. saw um, uh, drag kids, uh, club kids here in town. Jojo mm -hmm. Baby is one of them. Uh, glue feathers onto his eyelash. Lashes. And yeah. so the, when it moves, um, it really like animated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many tools and tricks that you can do to like achieve looks. And, you know, drag queens, like, they glue so much shit to themselves. Do you have any pets at home? Do you ever like chase after your cat and cut some of the fur on and glue it up? <laughs> well, <laughs> no. I mean, uh, well, I'm allergic to cats. So I can okay. only imagine how my eyes would look after trying to glue cat hair to them. <laughs> That's a bad I'd idea. Be like, I was going for that puffy, just woke <laughs> up from bed look. Um, yeah, no. Have you ever like uh, gone on a date with some before on a date and you're about to open the door and you like accidentally choke or swallow your gum or something and your eyes start like your bloodshot and all red and you're like <laughs> that's from smoking pot. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're like what's choking, wrong with this token. person? It's like look at him. It's going to work. Yeah, I so, mean, I never choke. My gag reflex is non-existent. <laughs> so. uh, lipsticks are too expensive. Nobody should spend $26 for a, a tube of lipstick. Uh, Pollo recommends Jordana Lip Liner and uh, a cheap $2 tube of... Wet and Wild? Wet and Wild. Um, is Wet and Wild good? Uh, <laughs> it's a great name. You can get it at the dollar store sometimes or at the cheaper stores. I mean... I, I feel like it's it's a toss up with Wet and Wild because sometimes I mean Wet and Wild I'm not too fond of their lipsticks. I love their nail polishes. Yeah. They have really great cheap like highly pigmented nail polish, but for me as a black girl, I need lipsticks that are really pigmented. I need it to show up. You want coverage. Yeah, I mm. want coverage. Also, I have quite large lips, so I go through lipstick pretty fast, you know. And I and Oh, I come just, on. Is it really that and how much, much silicone faster? do you have in your lips? Huh? <laughs> how much silicone do you have in your lips? Oh, it's not silicone. It's fat from my ass. <laughs> you don't have a vampire facial like no. Kim Kardashian did? Not yet. I booked mine for next month. <laughs> well, you're, you're a young queen, though. I yeah. don't want to. Uh, out you, but, but you like uh, all you girls are like uh, not even 30. It's like, oh, girl, I'm not far away from it. I'll be there soon enough. Um, uh, so, yeah, so Lamar recommends actually that uh, a lot of people, you know, you hear cover girl is does not cover boy. No, I don't. And all these brands that the pharmacy sells Walgreens is one. Ex and, and a lot of people don't realize that the pharmacy actually sells very expensive makeup. They do. And you can buy a lot cheaper makeup at these retail giants like Walmart and Target. Oh, well, we where's there a Walmart? Well, well, there's Target. Yeah, okay, we got Target. I don't know. Where You're like, how the fuck do I There's get that? There's a Walmart in Boys Town, but otherwise it's out in the like Ooh, out on two. Isn't that like an express Walmart? It is, is that even a real Walmart? They must like, have drag. I, I walk Boys past Town, there. And I'm drag. like, what is that? Because like everything's just like it looks like the back room at Walmart. Just like everything's just like out. It's like a mix between like Walmart and Sam's Club. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. where's the presentation? <laughs> well, the thing about it is, is a lot of people don't realize that they think they're going to Walgreens 
and it's, they're going to save money because it's not a, an official makeup counter. But sometimes yeah. those makeup counters actually, uh, if, if you look for coupons online, mm-hmm. you can get the same product for half the price. Yeah, girl. All so coupons sh- for drag. But the thing is that they trick <laughs> you. It's just like Walmart and Target. The reason they lower the prices on some of the products is so they can jack up the prices on other things. So you have to be very disciplined and only buy the thing you came there to buy. Yeah. Or what other uh, Poyo and other drag queens recommend is going online to buy makeup. Yeah, girl. Go. Do you do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But how do you know you're getting the right thing? Well, normally online like Amazon is a girl's best friend. Um, a lot of times, you know, makeup with anybody is really like trial and error. Sure. So I feel like if you find something and there's like a certain brand that you're like, all right, like I know that that works, then you can like go online to like replenish your supply and find it for much cheaper, you know? And also theater, like theater brands like Ben Nye, Krylon, they're really, really great because they provide the products that are, in my opinion, best equipped to handle uh, doing drag makeup, and they're much more cost effective than boutique brands like CoverGirl and Revlon. And uh, when your weave is thirsty, she recommends. Uh... <laughs> Girl, it begin thirsty. All those synthetic wigs. I understand. Uh, she recommends Aesthetica Designs Revitalizing and Shine Moisture Spray, which can be bought. For just pennies on the dollar on Amazon. What is a thirsty wig for those the listeners out there that don't know what it is? Well, my, I have naturally thirsty hair. Me too. You do too, mm-hmm. and it's like curly hair is thirsty, girl. And you want a uh, sheen or or some sort of like um, oil or silicone based product into your hair to to give it reflection, mm-hmm. a healthy. Hair. So it doesn't look so dry. Yeah, yeah. because naturally healthy hair has generates its own oil, and so mm-hmm. when your hair is a little drier, then you want to add that it oil. Looks a little crispy. You actually want to know what my uh, <laughs> crispy crispy <laughs> that wig's yeah, crispy, girl. Yeah, girl. <laughs> it's deep fried. I have a couple crispy ones i'm not gonna lie but you want to know actually what i use that really really helps um uh silicone based lube oh on, really on a, on a wig yeah girl and so do you spray it what do you do how do you spray lube so you, you make just rub lube? it on your hands yeah and you, you just put it? lube in your hands rub okay. it and then you just like why does that work so well well people always use that for like silicone dresses like if you're wearing not mm-hmm. silicone what are those dress the plastic the vinyl uh, latex. Latex. latex dresses mm-hmm. yeah. vinyl mm-hmm. dresses vinyl mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. yeah latex um it's I mean, well, most most of my wigs are synthetic, mostly because mm-hmm. synthetic wigs, uh, there's like plus and minuses to synthetic and human. Synthetic wigs have what you call memory, so they hold style. Right. So like once you set them, they'll stay, you know, so much better. And because they're made out of like plastic polymers, using silicone-based lube on them is really, really great. Especially like uh, straight styles, because they have the tendency mm-hmm. to get really staticky and kind of get a little crispy at the ends. Girl, you just use like a, a straight iron on a really, really low heat and then hit it with some lube, girl, and that shit mm-hmm. is silky. Well, I wonder too, it's like, you know, you might laugh, but WD-40 is actually, it's made from fish oil. That's the ingredient in there i wonder if because oh. that you can spray taking fish to a whole new level huh? <laughs> let's try it out so somebody out there who's got a real ratty wig try some oh. wd-40 on it and let us see let's see how i don't know if Be that like, would girl, work even my Why weave not? is fishy literally has fish oil <laughs> in my i am fish from head to, to toe, toe. And if you're not taking fish oil in your diet, you really should. It's very good for you. God, I try, but then I get those weird fish oil burps. You got to get the orange flavored or the lemon flavored. I actually prefer the orange flavored. Okay, well, I have to look into it. The burps, you just have to deal with it because it helps your body from the inside out. When's your your birthday? When's my birthday? Uh, February 8th. Oh, it's a long ways. I'll say I'll buy you a bottle for your birthday. (laughs) Well, my half birthday is August 8th, so you can buy me one for my half birthday. We'll do that for you. Thirsty hair. Next time we go to the... uh, to the vitamin store. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess, that, you know, the, the conclusion is basically it doesn't take a lot of money. It takes a lot of creativity and imagination. To and be time, person. too, because, like, I remember we, once we talked to Misunderstood and she uh, really talked about this queen who was like this broke ass queen. But she ha- had the time to sit and take what gown she had. And she just one by one sewed a sequin on a sequin. And, like, it took her hours to do it. But she was poor and had nothing else to do. She didn't have a job. So she's like, why not work on it? So if you're poor, don't have the money, spend the time. That's actually, you know what? <laughs> 
I I complain about being poor, but being poor is um, a really great resource because it teaches you how to be creative and savvy. Mm -hmm. You know, like some of the best ideas come from being poor because you're just like, all right, well, I don't necessarily have all the resources that I need. So I need to come up with necessary solutions and get creative and figure out ways to try and achieve this on a dime. You know, you're so right about that, because I think a lot of young drag queens, too, feel like if I'm spending a lot of money, then my drag act will be better no and money sometimes is a distraction yeah i I would say like uh one thing ultimately i want to leave people with is is you know it's what you do not how you look like as mr roger says it's not the clothes you wear it's not how you comb your hair it's you that they're there to see. It's you they like. Yeah, but yeah, Mr. But Rogers you... has never been to a drag show. Yeah. You know? Because mm. those bitches will tear you <laughs> apart. Yeah, bro. I'm you don't like, look good on stage? No. And Mr. Rogers won't be there to give you a hug when you no. come off that stage and all those bitches yeah. booed you because you looked like a hot ass mess. <laughs> Where is he then? <laughs> I mean, it's all good and gravy when he's telling you that as a child, setting you up mm. for failure, but... Um, but on, on the other hand, it's like have a sense of humor about <laughs> dragon listen oh, yeah. if you look like you're a busted queen and somebody says you look own like you're a busted queen own it but you also know? that's i mean and that's the beauty of drag and it, isn't it's weird how somebody can look busted and drag but look good and then other people look busted and, drag, and it doesn't look good you mm-hmm. know and you're just like it just nothing's working you're missing a component like i mean so you have to have all your pieces together that's why teriyaki has Sh- such a long career you know shopping at party city will take you far yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Bitch, I mean, like... Did I, you go I, to Party City? Yeah, I love to party at Party City. <laughs> like, I love... You know, I think, like, something that's, like, always a really fun challenge as a drag queen is trying to make looks out of, you know... Uh, found materials, you mm-hmm. know, things that aren't necessarily like fabric. You know, it always feels like a project runway challenge because you're like, it's the unconventional materials challenge. And people are like, oh, girl, like, what did you make that out of? And you're like, fancy ass, like, gift wrap. I, one of my favorite fou- outfits Foster ever wore was uh, he took uh, Doritos chip bags and free Frito Lay bags and all those like the smaller ones and he made. A I whole, washed them first. He washed them and he made he taped them together. Right, they were uh-huh. taped. Yeah. It was and couture made a, and made a dress out of them. And I was just like, oh, it was so fabulous. That's what they call and it. we sold that at a yard sale. We yeah. actually sold the dress at a yard sale. I think people got like, like ten or twelve this bucks. Is so for you know what the best part of the dress was? What? It was made with the uh, uh, diarrhea inducing chips. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, the wow chips oh is that a from diet the 90s, that right? i have they had a lester in them or something and, oh. and, so and it had a when warning. they ate a lester i thought it may cause diarrhea this giant warning label that was about like mm-hmm. an inch and a half on the on the packaging mm-hmm. says uh do not eat entire contents of bag <laughs> Damn, but what happens when you're hungry and you like smoked a huge old blunt and you have the munchies? Don't I, eat what, the wild chips. When kids. I go to the dollar store, I'm always looking around thinking to myself, I could put that could put that in drag. That, that could be part right? of an outfit. Me you too. could do something with that. That could be a fascinator. Right. And it'll cost you a dollar. Mm-hmm. There you, you know? go. Uh, you guys have heard on this podcast and throughout the season a lot of uh Articles have gone viral that, you know, represent legitimate gripes and concerns that people have about uh, inequity and injustice and inequality. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing I point out is like it's strange that we don't ever see like uh, blog articles that unite people that bridge the differences and talk about what we share in common and how we overcome these differences. It's, It's usually about, you know, taking these really serious problems that people have individually mm-hmm. and turning into this giant battle. So it's about like that drag queens are ruining black women's natural beauty, that it's uh what? wait, what? Yeah, I don't know if you followed all these things or not. Wait, drag queen wait, why it's specifically long, black women? That's what the blog entries that went viral say were saying. So so anyways, the latest uh, chapter in this one um comes from one of our uh listeners. That's Lola K. Francis. And uh, she's pointing out that this blog entry that was uh, posted in 2013 mm-hmm. about gay men's sexism and women's bodies, uh, saying that, you know, there are some because ga- there are some gay men who at, at bars grab women's tits. Don't do that, you misogynist. Yeah. <laughs> um, that somehow that their gay men are once again ruining uh, women and uh, and uh, they're uh, encouraging unhealthy body issues because they're involved in fashion and they're that because they have no uh, sexual interest in women's bodies that they have a very low disregard for their well-being as uh, as tastemakers and mm-hmm. my response to her is like 
you know, this blog entry really disregards the significant contributions of women in fashion that have uh, throughout the the generations, like mm -hmm. Coco Chanel, Diane von Furstenberg, for example, who have significantly influenced how we think about women's bodies. And the reason that a lot of uh, women models are very tall is because, like a wire hanger, people in fashion like the way the clothes hang off of its skinny, tall woman's bodies. And because they're doing runways, they can't have a broad variety of shapes and sizes. They all have to have one size so they can switch the clothes around easily. Yeah. Now, just because a wire hanger might be interesting, it's not something you're going to model yourself after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because so then, like yeah. you know, most guys, most guys like women with curves. They like big bo boobs and and big butts, mm -hmm. and it's more comforting. And you got to think about the fashion today uh, compared to what it's been in the past. You know, if you look at China, I mean, the fashion in the day was to bind a woman's foot, and so basically she'd have this one big giant toe, no toes, you know, because they were so bound and like these warped little foot, That's she hot. could barely even walk. You know, so That's how things they have like gotten them. better. They don't want their women to get away too fast. That's what that. And was then all you look about. at Africa, and you like you see these people. With like these long, like these things that they put on their necks to make the their rings. necks, the rings to make their necks longer. You take those rings off, that head falls over. They're done. You know, it's the, and the body modifications that people have gone through. Fashion. I mean, I mean, Western women culture we're obsessed with like yeah. tattoos and piercings. Yeah. You know, I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah. Well, and you remember uh, recently there was one that was like uh, white men check your privilege about uh, oh, that gay men. Sierra Manny piece yeah. about gay men imitating uh, black women and. And, and I said, it's like, listen, you know, these concerns are legitimate, but at the same time, it, you know, ultimately, is it, is it um, making, is it fighting inequality? Is it fighting poverty? Is it giving people job opportunities? To, and maybe it is. I think it's building awareness. I, I mean, the whole Sierra Manny piece, like in Time she, Magazine. Yes. She, I'm, she had a point. With mm -hmm. what she was saying. And we all how, know yeah. that specific individual that comes in and acts like a black woman and mm -hmm. thinks it's the funniest thing mm -hmm. in the world. And it's so like, mm -hmm. get over yourself, Mary. I don't have it's time. Just like, it's just like, it's weird. You hear me, Tranica Rex? I'm just <laughs> kidding. Tranica Rex, she don't have a black bone in her body. And like, she Really? Never? No. Maybe she only goes what, for white between guys? Between her legs, She's maybe. from Florida. Do you really think that she fucks black guys? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I've seen her relatives. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, but so, so met her mother. Addressing her mother the is article. the sweetest thing yeah. ever. Her mother, I she's I an angel. Her. I adored yeah. her. I'm like, God, she's so charming. I don't know what happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are best buds, though. Yeah, we you are. Guys, you do. That's why we like to talk shit about each other, like on podcasts and things. So you know, we <laughs> like to we like to humble each other. <laughs> Remember, I'm better than you. <laughs> Remember, you oh, were so, never first runner up in Miss Roscoe's track, uh, were you? Yeah, I slayed my way all the way to second place. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Who beat the Gia Gun one? The contest or no? no Gia she was, was last the year year's before. winner. Yes, it was Eva Envy who took the crown. Okay, and where's she now? Not on this podcast. Yeah, that's right. So, so um, in <laughs> oh, Sierra, addressing Sierra oh, Manning's article, you were about to say uh, that we know people that are like that, but... Here's the thing. I think that she had a point with the article. I wish she, the article had been written by a queer woman. I think that instead of it being such uh, her pointing her fingers at gay white men without, I don't feel like she has any gay white male friends to really mm -hmm. have as a reference to check in with. It was very much so this moment of, hey, you check your privilege without her kind of like taking a moment to right. like, and you know, consider the privileges that she has as a black woman, which aren't much, you know, because they're a very wide marginalized group of people and black women deal mm -hmm. with a lot of bullshit. But um, there is a lot of, uh, homophobic remarks that were in that article that I feel like this generation I feel like we're in this era of like calling people out mm -hmm. like it's almost like this like reverse bullying as to where like you know we used to like bully people and make them feel bad for like who they were now it's just like these people who like to call people out and say like hey you're not right for thinking and behaving that way people just love to share their opinion because that's just you know like how we are but I think what we need to try to do collectively is to try and create dialogue as opposed to pointing fingers. You're saying, saying that hey, saying that. saying to somebody, check your privilege ends the conversation instead of starts it. Yeah. 
But I mean, I would not, I would be lying if I said I didn't say that to people. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's important it's, for because, some people to because recognize my life is hard because not only am I black, but I'm also gay. But the, the part of it sissy. I think is yeah, is, whatever. Is, <laughs> it's very cynical because it assumes that your background is going to be the way you think about the world. That um, people yeah. with similar backgrounds reach the similar conclusions, and we've seen. Hashtag Condoleezza Rice. Oh. That not, people with with uh you know can be African American, can have a, come from a very humble background, and not reach the same conclusion. So yeah. So background uh-huh. and and opinions and conclusions aren't the same thing. But we don't really claim Condoleezza Rice. You guys can have her. <laughs> her and Colin Powell. Who, who does she just got hired by Dropbox? Of all companies, mm-hmm. um, it's like to be on the board. To be on the board of directors, but all these like evil, scary politicians and Republicans and and Democrats even are getting like hired and paid. Well, off. they always have. I mean, Hillary Clinton was on the board of directors for Walmart for years, and they do that because they these corporations know that these people with these political backgrounds a can get things done, mm-hmm. but also to, because they have those kinds of connections. And I mean, support. she was the she was the you know head of the Department of State. So it's like she yeah. knows people and can do things. Yeah. Um, a recent poll, and because you're a sci-fi fan, right? Yeah. You like your uh, Star Trek and Star Wars. I have never seen one Star Trek or Star Wars film. What? Yeah. Didn't we have this conversation? Didn't Remember? you watch d- uh, the Star Trek TV show you never watched? Uh, uh, no. Rem- your we, dad was in it. We people. talked about my grandpa. Remember? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> they had black. They people had black in. people in the future where I know, things but were they better. Looked, they looked fucking scary as shit, and I think that's Nicole, why I was like Nicole. She did not. She Nichelle a, Nichols. Nichelle. <laughs> Nichelle Nichols and Samuel Jackson as Mace Windu are the reason we want to be in the. Fu- okay, listen, but okay. Star Trek. I will credit them because yeah. they did have the first interracial kiss on TV. You know they they. Uh, uh, black, what is it? Black. They it out blacked there. it out in the South. They didn't have the kiss on. Damn. Yeah, George Takei was just talking to Bill Maher about that, but that's uh, something we've known for a while. But uh, I mean, and that's funny because white men have been sexualizing black women in the South for forever. So I think it's really funny that. They well, were it was like, a kiss of, of coming from an equal place. Yes. Oh yeah, and so it was like just getting her pregnant and then yeah. leaving. It wasn't. Her. It was I not. It, it was non exploitive kiss because he was he was the captain of mm-hmm. her, but at the same time. I think in the episode they were both having being controlled. It was mutual. It was a mutual thing. So no, I think they were controlled by something. Is that how it was? They yeah. were forced into. Oh, it. they were forced. It into was somebody's it. fetish. Oh, you know. And George Takei also said that he tried to pitch a gay storyline to Gene Roddenberry, but he's like, "Oh no, girl, people are not ready for that <laughs> shit." So listen to this one here. Uh, I don't know how you feel about Hillary Clinton or Mike Huckabee. Uh, but a recent poll in, could have a threesome. Uh, reveals that Darth Vader, the character in the Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. the Sith Lord, is more popular politically than either Hillary Clinton or Mike Huckabee. Um, they were looking at the relationship of various Star Wars characters with Luke Skywalker and Han Solo mm-hmm. ranking at the top mm-hmm. and Jar Jar Binks at the bottom, even less popular than Emperor Palpatine. Now, the Washington Post compared the results with other similar surveys, revealing through statistics that Emperor Palpatine, the evil overlord of the universe, was not as distasteful as Jeb Bush, Mitch McConnell, (laughs) and Harry (laughs) Reid. So if Darth Vader ran for president, he'd be a front runner over Hillary Clinton. Well, he did bring balance to the force. So we would have two black men in office, one right behind... One another. That's, that's right. I mean, well, I would let James when Earl Jones be my president. When you take the helmet off, he's white. <laughs> Did you not know that? The Girl, voice. I told you. I don't know shit. Yeah. I Alex. mean, I just imagined that it was a skinny James Earl Jones under there. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's an English actor with an Ooh. English accent. I just thought, like, being in that suit, he just like dropped like eighty pounds. <laughs> And like that was the magic of the suit because no, it was he was like, still he was still kind of chunky underneath the suit. Oh, he was. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. You're not gonna like it. Oh, I probably won't. <laughs> it's a down. It's a boner killer. Like, oh, unless it's Beyonce, I don't care. <laughs> you wonder what was the actor that played uh, Anakin Skywalker in the pre in the Christian Hayden? Christian, you're expecting like a sexy older Christian Hayden, and you're like, oh, Blee. it's chunky man. Oh, I'm sorry, Chunky Man. Um, in the in the in the study, also it, it revealed that uh, Jar Jar Binks and Rick Santorum and John Boner are all the sa- uh, equally popular. I'm sorry, did you say John Boner? It's Boner. Boner, Boner. We Cock, like to say Boner. Coke. 
Oh, I mean, I was just, I was just double checking that I heard that correctly. He's a boner that. for He's sure, a not a baner. No, I think so. I mean, I'm Mr. A Orange. This yeah, is, I'm a fan of a boner. People doing this is like they're just doing this as a lark or as a joke, right? It's not like people like. Well, I mean, it's, what it's, kind it's, of science? It's, is the, it's hard science. I mean, it's hard statistics. They're actually saying, and this is the thing about it. You know, part of it you have to take this with a grain of salt because mm -hmm. it is fiction that is designed to sell movie tickets mm -hmm. yeah. and probably if Dick Cheney which is basically the equivalent that we have to Darth Vader or Emperor Palpatine uh, ran for president I don't think he would do as well as a fictional character that's designed to be badass and cool mm -hmm. I just would not want to hang out with Dick Cheney in fear of being shot <laughs> Like, just don't let him have a gun around you. Does anybody want to hang out with? That's why he has, doesn't have any friends. Well, they love guns, don't they? Isn't that like Republicans? That's their, you know, their thing. They yeah. love firearms because you know shooting things is masculine. So a judge says that John Travolta's ex supposed lover uh, is able to write a book about his experience. John Travolta was trying to sue him. There was this guy who worked in, uh, on his aircraft with him, and he says that things got sexual between the mm -hmm. two of them. They had a long affair, and then he, he stopped working for him in 19, 1987, mm -hmm. and there was some kind of agreement on the termination of their working, and probably there was a non-disclosure kind of thing, but now he's uh, he's saying that like uh, like that's invalid, or it, didn't, it doesn't take, and so now he can tell his side of the story. So we're going to get to hear all the dirty little secrets, John Travolta. What a bottom John Travolta is. <laughs> Actually, he's got, they say he's got an eight inch cock. Bruce Flanch said he sucked on it. And that, like, back in 1973, I think he said it was. He said that when was he it, was hot. And he said, was it, was it really eight inches? He goes, I could have sworn it was bigger. Yeah, I got a big <laughs> cock too, but I'm a big old Nelly bottom when I want to be. So don't mean shit. Don't mean shit. Okay, listeners out there. <laughs> Big cock Nelly Jay Bottom. Coulet, you can find her on Facebook and Twitter. You're on Twitter too, right? Yes, mm -hmm, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram under Miss Coulet if you nasty. And is it M I S S or M S or M, -M I S S? I've never been married. Okay. I don't know. I'm just clarifying. I am a single lady. You gender nonconforming girls are very creative when it comes to pronouns and prepositions. I know. That's the fun and the joy of being a drag queen. You get to write your own rules. Honey, mm -hmm. you were so poor when you were growing up. Language was the only toy you could play with. <laughs> that really hurt my feelings. So somebody wrote okay, it. Okay, so let me, let, <laughs> let me, let me uh, t t talk about this really fast. Uh, okay. uh, right now in San Francisco, Drag Queen Sex in the City has opened, starring Heclina, Darcy Drollinger, Lady Bear in Alaska. Obviously. It is opening in August, I think. Well, it? it's it's on the, I thought it just started opening. Am I I read an email. I think it, I think it was in August. Oh, whoops! Oh, it's opening soon. <laughs> there you go. Go see it, people, because it's gonna be good. So I want to go see in it. San Fran. So it's drag queen sex in the city. So what are they parodying the characters from yeah. the show? That's really interesting. Who's Alaska gonna be? Is she gonna be Miranda? I think she's gonna be Miranda. Perfect, because Miranda's my favorite. She's the one that I identify with the most. Hi. Like most, no one ever wants to be Miranda. Why are you looking at me like that? Like, Miranda's the slut. No, that's Samantha. Miranda's the goody She's goody. the one who married the Jewish guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. no, 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 no. Yeah, she married that's a Jewish Charlotte. guy. That's Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Yes, I'm Charlotte. Sorry, Charlotte. Miranda's the redheaded lawyer. That's the, the lesbian. ball bus. The lesbian. The yeah. So, so there's, Cynthia Nixon. There's a uh, horse face, slut, uh, married the Jewish guy, and the lesbian, lesbian. redhead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the lesbian redhead. <laughs> <laughs> Only because, and I know, like, no one ever wants to be Miranda. A, because, like, during the show, she was so dowdy, and, like, she just always, you know, looked like mm -hmm. shit and always had, like, a bad attitude. But, well, I have a bad attitude, and half the time I look like shit. So, uh, I just identify with her because, like, she was no, she was, like, no nonsense. Like, all the other girls put up was, like, so much bullshit from guys, and she was just, like, shut the fuck up and just stick it in. In real life, she doesn't put up with any bullshit from any guys because she's a lesbian. <laughs> she was. She's the smart one. She's like, fuck those dudes. Uh, so Dan Savage uh, got a letter from a, a, a fan, a friend of his, or whatever. Uh, from a, from somebody wrote in, and he wrote. He, and yeah. he wrote something. And he goes, "The gay world is obsessed with uh, youth and beauty, and once you're not young anymore, your life may as well be over. If you don't have a tight ass and ripped abs and a hot cock, you have no value and nothing can t to contribute. Why is the gay world so shallow?" And you hear this sentiment. Oh, uh, we're also from, obsessed. With with money so as long as you have that then you're fine 
funny. <laughs> uh, Hashtag Justin Jedlicka. <laughs> <laughs> the human Kendall. Well, and, you know, and Dan, Dan gives a good response. And he names all these people that are, uh, you know, over like 50 or 40 years old and 70 years old and all these people that have accomplished so much and have like lives that are full and rich. And do things with their life. And he goes on to say, so he gives this whole list of all these people. And he says, uh, and if you don't think gay men over 35, 50, 60, or 70 have anything to contribute, then it's not the gay world that's shallow. It's you. Yeah. And I'm like, there you go, Dan. Good one. Also, <laughs> what about women? <laughs> like, think about them. When they age, like, they're like, she's old. Men get older and, you know, they're like, he's distinguished mm-hmm. and he's this. But once women aren't young and hot and their tits aren't, like, right under their earlobes, like, people cast them aside. You mm-hmm. know, it's not it's not just gays. It's the world in general. We're obsessed with youth. You know, we like to cast older people away because, you know... Y- the I youth is what kind of like power they're the future and they kind of power the way people think about things well, they change well, perspective right. people chase after that they chase after youth because there's well and the economy the economy really chases after youth too because they're like they know if they get a customer like at a very young age like mcdonald's that's why you have so much of their advertisement targeted as children they're going to eat that stuff for mm. the rest of their life and you're going to have them forever. i'm living proof of that I live right across you live the street a, from a McDonald's guy. <laughs> Damn the only, it! The only reason why I go to that McDonald's is to stand uh, is to stand on the parking lot and look up because if you look up every now and then, you see a really fine man with no shirt on up on that second floor there. Just do it. Have you seen yes. him? You've seen him. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I know exactly. I, I <laughs> Who can see is him. that man? I can see him from my apartment. So you I don't know even you have can't. to. Yes, I can. So I don't even have to go to McDonald's. Bitch, I'm coming over some night and we're going to get up binoculars. I, like, I actually I like have your binoculars. Sexy roommates. <laughs> I'm not lying. I have binoculars, okay. so I already have a pair. I'll, bring, I'll pack the ball. Honey, there take the take the binoculars, turn them out of the window and down the hall. You have the cutest, sexiest little roommates. Oh, Victor, just one roommate. Just oh, one. I thought it was there were like a couple or something. Because I came no. over and they were like trying on clothes, and the, it sounded like they were having sex and trying on clothes. Girl, on. they were just trying on clothes. It that was just, just what drag. little Nelly girls do before they go out. You got to try on all your outfits. <laughs> They're girl. like, no, you look good in this. Oh, and like, okay, put this on. <laughs> what? And, and what are you gonna do with two bottoms? Huh? They're just gonna press butts together. That's why they sell double-headed dildos, honey. Yeah, I, I, you yeah. roommate's the one who wears the the mesh shirt in his grinder profile, right? <laughs> That's him, right? Oh, I just you, want to be sure. It's funny because you, like, you don't mind if I fuck him, do you? Uh, no, no, go right on ahead. <laughs> Does he like daddies? Uh, he likes black eyes. Oh, oh, sorry. Well, you could just you know, uh, pretend like you're a black man at, at a bar and start talking like. Um, that doesn't work. That's problematic. <laughs> That's problematic. But I mean, so, so well, okay. In his yes. defense, in yeah. his defense, he doesn't exclusively like black guys. He likes guys with really big dicks. So do you fall in that category? If it's I brown, wouldn't say it's really it big, goes down. but it's good. It's He's not a size queen oh, girl. Like, are you talking like eight, nine queen. inches? Mark's yeah. not he wants. scary oh. penis size big. He wants it scary. Oh. Yeah. Well, how about if we have two dicks? Hey, girl, I mean, like, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with a DP. I mean, what, what sometimes is DP's yeah, just, <laughs> double penetration. Hey, uh, one of our listeners, Bryce, wants to, us to talk about this. Hmm. Skin care for black men. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, the concepts between lotions and moisturizers. And a lot of uh, young black men don't realize that you don't want to put cocoa butter on your face. No. You want to put moisturizer, non oil free moisturizers because you mm-hmm, want to get mm-hmm. those pores nice and clean and tight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, tell young Bryce what he should do with his skin. Or um, There is this amazing moisturizer that I use. I believe it's by Clean and Clear. It is That's a brand, right? Clean and Clear? Yeah, yeah. That's what it's called? Okay, yeah. It's with the oil free one. Yeah, it's oil free. It has a sus- sunscreen in it. And well. salicylic like, like, acid. Yeah, and a salicylic bit. acid. So That's it's what really I use. great for yeah. And it's it lasts for a long time. It takes like two little squirts and you know, you moisturize your face. For as far as like my body is moisturizing my body, I use either cocoa butter or coconut oil. Because one thing I find about the coconut butter and the coconut oil is that it's good to moisturize parts of your body that people don't naturally come across, like your hands. I'm sorry, like your legs or your chest or your back. But it's like in your forms, you want to use 
uh, e either like a vino is what I recommend. Um, because uh, just like because I, I was like touching a stripper the other day mm -hmm. and he was like all oiled up and it was like this feels wrong you know it feels like there's too much grease on your skin um well, i don't like grabbing it though yeah girl it's easy for you to slip off like get a, <laughs> it's like a grease pig you can right. get away mm -hmm. you can get away i love being greasy you do? like it's oh my god well also too like as a black girl like in the summer like you look so fucking good when you're walking down the street in your short shorts and your tank top and you're just like shining from head to toe because on, <laughs> on like dark skin with like the sun hitting all the those highlights like all your muscles and everything just looks good so like i have a good girl, point just like yeah. coconut oil i'm like slathering that shit on and i like walk out my shoulders looking all are like you getting nice greased up for beyonce tonight bitch you know it you're I gonna go see beyonce <laughs> in concert yes i am and uh do you feel that beyonce gay men are ruining black natural what was it natural black women's beauty is being ruined because gay men are making beyonce be more of a drag queen <laughs> than she needs to be um no I think that natural black women's beauty, uh, girl, be natural. I mean, and that you, here's the thing: Beyonce is not trying to. She is a pop star, so she has to have wide commercial appeal. And so, as a light skin blonde black girl, she's going to have a lot of appeal to a lot of people because you know what? There are a lot of white people that are not going to, you know, take in your product if you're coming out with an afro. I mean, when your hair is straight, white people are comfortable. When it's nappy, they ain't happy. Okay. okay. <laughs> What? When it's nappy, they ain't happy. But Grace Jones is uh, certainly the uh, an exception to that. Mm -hmm. But she has role. a cult following. Like mm -hmm. she never had pop right. fame, you know. And also, when people looked at Grace Jones, they oftentimes looked at her like a freak. Like she was crazy. I mean, the, the, the bitch is crazy, which is. I love. Mm -hmm. I love. I love her personality. She's so eccentric. But Beyonce, she is an industry in and of herself. She is a product. You know, she is something that's being marketed. And I don't think Gaiman are to blame i just think society standards on uh beauty are to blame you can't i'm just more infinitely on. fascinated by grace jones than i ever and maybe this is my age than beyonce like i like beyonce i have beyonce's music on my Calm um down. Uh, on my iPhone, and but I listen to But you have like deep reverence for Grace Jones. You know? Grace Jones was somebody who was like part of so many interesting projects and mm -hmm. movies and and scenes, and she knew so many interests. She was lovers with Dolph Lund Lundgren. <laughs> she got his. That's start. so amazing. Well, she was also <laughs> uh, hanging out at Studio Fifty Four. She was oh, part yeah. of New York City's like underground scene. She did uh, just her that album, uh, Island Life, is is yeah. Is much better than anything that Beyonce has ever put out. <laughs> um, well, that's gonna I'm be fighting gonna need words you with some to people. settle yourself really quick because check your this privilege. last album. Yeah, you better <laughs> check your. This last album that she put out just changed the entire game. What are you talking about? Okay, so you have a lot to say, and I want to leave this one here with uh, the debate between Tyra Banks and Naomi Campbell. Yes. Well, Who's actually, I don't. I, we, I last don't. time we were talking, we were talking about Naomi Campbell and Tyra Banks. I'm like, well, Tyra Banks is like, you know, she's more famous than Naomi and certainly must be much richer than Naomi. So Tyra Banks is worth double the, the I think it's like 80 million. And she's worth 90 Naomi's. million and Naomi is worth 48 million. Yes, there you go. And um, this is all I have to say about that. Um, did Tyra <laughs> Banks get a shout out in Supermodel? Uh, well, she wasn't in. She wasn't a working uh, model at the time yes, that Supermodel. No, she was not. She Her was career around. started um, after uh, Supermodel. Well. Uh, it was a hit. I actually uh, checked that. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. Fact checked. <laughs> well, if, this is what I have to say about. And that. who does RuPaul parody now? Naomi Campbell or Tyra Banks? Tyra Banks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I appreciate your honesty here. Yeah. Because I oh, know no. you love Naomi Campbell. Oh, because Naomi Campbell is better. <laughs> That's why I like Naomi <laughs> why Campbell. Is she because better? She why is she better? better? That bitch can throw a phone. That's why. <laughs> and sometimes you just got to put a bitch in place and throw your phone. Okay. Here's the thing. Tyra Banks is delusional. I'm sorry, but she's a little $98 bit. $98 million dollars might do that to you. 
Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? If we're going to like uh, check out things, uh, you should really go on Amazon and look at the write-up for Tyra Banks' book called Model Land, because I'm pretty positive that Tyra Banks wrote that synopsis herself and no one from Amazon, because it's like, Model Land is literally the fiercest book to ever hit the shelves, ever. And it's basically chronicling, uh, like, uh, mirroring her story as a model. And like, it's just really ridiculous. But I'm talking too much about Tyra Banks. Let's get back to the real queen Naomi okay <laughs> Naomi has been slaying the modeling world for over 30 years girl why are we even comparing the two against each other because they're black duh but it was there was another thing was like it was it was what who influenced RuPaul the most but I think I we care. started talking about like who is the greatest black supermodel of all time Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell. Because in the world of modeling, she has got that shit on lock. Tyra got fat and then decided that she was just like, okay, well, and you know what? Let me choose my words correctly because I don't want to body shame. Tyra Banks did not get fat. She just grew boobs and some hips and some ass. And it was. She got thick and juicy. She got thick and juicy. And there's nothing wrong with that. But. She couldn't quite handle the fierceness that was Naomi Campbell and then had the nerve to be like, you bullied me mm-hmm. out of the modeling industry. And Naomi oh. Campbell was like, bitch, there's enough work to go around. And there were other black models besides you and me. <laughs> so I don't know why the hell you had to step out <laughs> but of high But before fashion. all of them, there was Oman. Wasn't Oman like the, the first? Barely, well, and I'm, she's worth about the same amount of money as Naomi. But she also is married to David Bowie. Yes. So Which is you, know, a, you minus. It's a, well, right. well, subtraction or there was, plus. It depends on you like a little freak in your life. There was a lot. I mean, there were she's, many she's black models to be bisexual. that existed yeah. before mm-hmm. Naomi and Tyra. Naomi and Tyra were, because that came around the age of like the supermodel where yeah. people became obsessed with the persona and the image of mm-hmm. certain models. It wasn't yeah. so much about just the models being these hangers at the club were on people were interested in the models well there was actually a a particular guy who kind of like coined that term supermodel and really advanced that whole concept Mm -hmm. of there is this supermodel and these these are women you should pay attention to and really elevated their stature and their pay raise and i I understand he recently died poor thing yeah well we all die but naomi back to her let's compare her (laughs) and tyra's walks on the runway um, <laughs> okay. Tyra, Tyra bounces down the runway, looking from right to left for approval mm-hmm. from everybody, and then Naomi turns the corner with her long ass yakky weave all the way down to her ass, <laughs> and literally she steps down that runway with so much swag. Like if there was a way for a model to walk like a pimp, that's how she walks. She always like steps first with like her right leg on like the downbeat of the music and then she does this like slow little like drag to catch. she's just Naomi is the ultimate you so, look at photos you look at like Tyra is a great model but she does not possess the je ne sais quoi that Naomi Campbell has so you feel like Naomi Campbell is, 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 is so confident that she does not care what other people think about her even yeah, though she's in the public eye yeah and that's admirable yeah Tyra makes more money because she you know came up with America's show, Next Top is, Model yeah. and then they branched that out into like who? Naomi Oh, thank you. Yes. Okay. I just want to make I'm sure. I'm just because when track. people hear pimping, it can mean anything. You know, it's like, what is she selling prostitutes on the side? Maybe. She could, and I wouldn't be mad at her. <laughs> I wouldn't be. Mad. I was like, side hustle. You better get your side hustle, girl. Tyra Banks. She has America's <laughs> Next Top Model, and you have a brothel. Good for you. Where's my cut? Uh, we have our Kickstarter. Also, I think I'm just naturally drawn to <laughs> Naomi because um, she's darker. Um, Tyra can pass the paperback test. And I know, like I say that like all the time, but there is actually like a, there's, there is divide in the black community between people, between people that are lighter and people that are Mm -hmm. darker, people that are lighter and have kind of like more like, uh, European like features to them. They tend to have easier time getting more success because by, you know, the, the, the people that consume the products, which tend to be, you know, the majority, which happens to be white people. You know, they yeah. they're more comfortable with that image of a light complected black person like Beyonce mm-hmm. with light hair, light eyes. They Rihanna, you know what I'm saying? They soak that up really, really easy. Darker women like Naomi Campbell, Grace Jones, they don't quite take in that product too much because that blackness is a little bit too fierce for them to handle. And that's why me as a dark girl, I'm always rooting for them. You Bur- know? Burple is the new black. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Poor Shay's like confused. I wish you could see her. Do you know what like, purple is? I don't know what What's that means. What's purple? Purple it's is like when you're so black, you're purple. Oh, so purple my daddy. Purple. My yeah. Purple is the new black. <laughs> um, we want to remind people that uh, Feast of Fun is made possible because of your financial support. And right now, we are doing a Kickstarter project because these fabulous drag queens that you guys have heard uh, on the podcast throughout the years deserve a, their own TV show. Woo woo! And, um, and Cooking with Drag Queens you is know, going to be a reality. I'm not doing the casting, but uh, let's just say that um, <clears throat> our guest here, Naomi, I mean, sorry. Naomi Campbell. Uh, what the fuck is your name? Shea Coulet. Oh, wow. It's a top contender. <laughs> is a oh, front runner for season thanks. one. Which is, you know, kind of like not something you want because that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the BB, curse season, the, the pork BB chop. Zahara spinet yeah. season. <laughs> Damn. So basically, we're going to have Vaseline over the lens. Is that how it's going to look? We're actually Don't ruin my it. smoke joke. It's actually a joke that we're actually writing into the series is that <laughs> in the beginning, we're like, what's wrong with the vid, with the camera? And so we pull out a wipe. burning something. <laughs> and then we wipe. Are you burning the, something again. Wipe, it's the, the hash out. brownies, man. Uh huh. So we have 29 days to go. We've raised four thousand three hundred and fifty-two dollars of our goal of twelve thousand dollars. That's amazing. So we've had some like uh, some things to accomplish this next this past week that we're working on, and next week we're gonna hit it hard and really try and get people interested in this project. Hot. Yeah, I want to uh, really it say it's it's been extraordinary the support we've gotten from people that like we don't even know, like uh, and blogs and drag queens and. Tastemakers mm -hmm. have all given it the thumbs up, yeah. and, and uh, w one one tastemaker that I really uh, appreciate their uh, enthusiastic support is a uh, porn star Billy Santoro. Santoro, I'm sorry, Billy, I missed the. I didn't write down your full name, but Billy says he will do cam sessions for whoever donates a thousand dollars. Wow! So if you have a thousand dollars, he'll do a cam session, and he is hot. He's and really you better sexy. go back in and edit in his name right now. <laughs> well, but, uh, so yeah. you're just paying a grand to jerk off with somebody over the camera. Yeah, but then you get but then you get to also help produce a wonderful show like Cooking with Drag Queens. So when are you guys gonna it. branch out and do wrestling with drag queens? Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Mimi I'm first tried that and it didn't work out too well for I'd her. I'd take that bitch. I would take that bitch. So his name is I would Billy. get nice and cocoa buttered up for her and slip right through her face. <laughs> Billy. Try and lift me up over so you. It's Billy Santoro, not Santorum. Billy Santoro Triple X. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, and he is seriously. He's telling all his. He's he's one of those viral stars. You know, he has a lot of people that follow him. Mm -hmm. on social media and he's actually like telling people to donate you just even a dollar if you can't donate a dollar just share it with your friends because you have rich friends somewhere yeah somebody you know has got money you got some money but you know beg and borrow and mm -hmm. you know wink, and if you wink. can't make if you can't make a donation you know go to our kickstarter page there's a place for you to comment on there your kickstarter looks at that kind of stuff they see what kind of traffic's going there if you want this uh, to succeed and you don't have the financial resources to help out share it on Facebook Twitter it but also go to the, spend some time on the Kickstarter page and you know give it an endorsement for it I want to do a sh special shout out to Mark W Christopher B and Thomas G who have donated significant amounts of money um, and uh, really have helped us to, to raise 33% uh, of our goal in the first 10 days Yes. Uh, you no, know, and I was like telling people about this, and they were all like going, "Well, Reading Rainbow raised a, a million dollars on the first day," and I'm like, oh, "Reading Rainbow, even though it sounds like a show about drag queens, it's not." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see Lavar Burton in drag. We'd be like, "Bitch, this is Reading Rainbow." Reading Look Rainbow. At you. That was actually this podcast. And was somebody <laughs> was asking us who our dream guest would be for Cooking with Drag Queens, and I have to say personally, it would be Richard Simmons because oh, yeah. I watched him when he had his like little cooking like health show back in the day, and now he's uh, you know a drag queen, really. Yeah, that's Alex Miller who uh, just recently uh, got to meet his hero, uh, Alaska Thunderfuck. Aww. And Alex is really cute. Alex, you 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 use like such unflattering photos sometimes of you on Facebook, and this photo with you in Alaska <laughs> is adorable. You bitch. Well, sometimes like I gotta tell so you, you gotta tell people sometimes. He's you a cute, just... cute little boy who listens to the podcast and is a fan of drag queens, and it's like, and you know, it's like, honey. You look good. You more look good selfies. More selfies, hunty. Oh God, I'm so I can't do selfies. 
Mostly because I dropped my phone and my cam my oh, selfie camera is broken. But just <laughs> listen, you're a drag queen, you can command people. You take my photo now. Hashtag me. <laughs> yeah, I actually had somebody come up to me at the club like the other day and they were like, Hey girl, can you take a picture of me? And I was like, First of all, I'm a drag queen. You don't come up to me and ask me to take a picture of you. <laughs> I get photographed, okay, bitch. I don't take pictures. You did not. Of- Yes, did, I did. Yes. yes, I did. He was like, hey, so here's this like other because uh, I was like standing You're like, with check your privilege. No, because I was like standing <laughs> with uh, my girl Kim Chi and they like run up to her and she was looking fabulous this night. She really was. And they were like, oh, my God, it's my friend. It's his bachelor party. He's getting married. Can we take a picture with you? And Kim Chi was like, she was already kind of over. And she's like, yeah, I guess I can take a picture. And he like turns and like holds out his phone to me like, can you take a picture of us? And I was just like. Bitch, first so of all, I'm looking, I'm looking sickening as a motherfucker, so don't you go and try and hand your camera to me while you're in your dockers and your khaki shorts asking me to take a photo. Bitch, you see what I did tonight? See how my hair is laid, hunty? It was. I had all the lube in my hair that night, and it was looking silky and straight, bitch. And you're trying to ask me to stand behind the camera and take a picture of you and your drunk friends? I was like, fuck that bullshit. Is, is it considered in poor taste, um, like... You know, the people at uh, at Man's Chinese Theater is like, if you want to have a photo taken with Superman or Batman, they, they go like, you know. Give we, me money. Give me, some t- give me a tip or something. It, mm-hmm. And I think like if you want your photo taken with a drag queen and you're basically a tourist, mm-hmm. you should t- tip them. Yeah, mostly because they're, they're just like, oh, look at this clown. Look at this novelty. It's like, you know, when someone is actually a fan of drag queens, when they ask you your name. When they're like, what's your name? Can I have a picture? Most people are like, hey, uh, funny crossdresser, can I have a picture with you? And you're like, oh, Jesus Even Christ. then, you know, some of these kids don't think twice about blowing a $20 bill on a fancy cocktail. They could give you a five, a ten, a, a Benjamin Hunties. Or you can just give me a nice stiff dick. <laughs> <laughs> Shake Kool-Aid. Thank you very you much. You're running for president. Such a treasure. 2032. I, I don't even know if that's you. an election year. I just made it up because it was an even number. Uh, next week, uh, one of the most hated drag queens from season six. No, no, not Laganja Estranja. But uh, Magnolia Crawford is going to be in the home studio. We'll find out if she's naughty or nice. We also have uh, comedian Mo Welch. She's a lesbian comedian out in L.A. She used to be from Chicago. She's back visiting. She'll be on uh, Tuesday. And then Eric Lucian, you remember him, the hot Nebraska out gay football player who (laughs) recently went back to Nebraska for Heartland Pride. And he was the grand marshal of their parade. So we're going to, you know, we, we dissed Chicago's pride and San Francisco's pride and said how tacky and and just crazy they are. We're going to uh, talk about a pride that just, you know, didn't overwhelm everyone. Let me, let me people, <laughs> I just got to say, you know, Eric Lucian has a thing for uh, silver daddies like ours, ourselves. So, so if the show doesn't get taped, you'll have you'll to You'll know us. why. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we, we had the, what, one time we had the, the, the sexy gorge. The one time I felt like, if the oh 13 by the way for those that are keeping count 13 13 yeah. man. people we've had sex with who have been guests on the show it was the two basketball <laughs> players from logos reality tv show we Jam- did not have sex with them jamal lewis and uh i forgot the other guy's name but jamal mm-hmm. was you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. really really jamal attractive does a lot of really weird jesusy stuff though on the facebook it's yeah kind of but he out. came here and it was like uh his one of his boyfriends and then like a publicist from Logo, and they're sitting there on their sofa, and they're just like li- giving us the evil eye. And these guys are so charming and cute and and uh, delightful. And I just turned to them in the podcast. I said, "We don't need to tape this show. <laughs> we can do other things. Send your people away." No, one of them was his like the that was his boyfriend. And he was like, "Don't you steal my man? <laughs> you can watch." <laughs> they were all good looking men, and I was like, "I was like, fuck this podcast. <laughs> Let's fuck." <laughs> That didn't happen. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry to disappoint Listen, everybody. Where's your, to where's, where's your little whistle at that point? <laughs> this is a story of my life. 
<laughs> Shay Coule, you are adorable. You are so wonderful. Please come back soon. Yeah, let me plug some things. Oh, yeah, what do you got? Um, well, this uh, Saturday I'll be at Berlin doing the Berlin Drag Matinee hosted by Tranica Rex, Train Rex. Um, Tranic Rex who? Yeah, who. Um, you can also <laughs> catch me on Wednesdays. I host my own show at Hydrate called Face. You guys should come sometime. Well, Which is the one that you dance the most at? All of them. So you're basically always hustling your booty on that stage. Girl, it's my best ass at. Because <laughs> <laughs> you do like a, a really elaborate choreography. Yeah. Well, I lo- I've been dancing since I was three, so it, it just kind of comes second nature. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really stunning. If you guys ever get a chance to see uh, Shea Coulee, if you're traveling to Chicago, uh, hit her up on Facebook. Yeah, I'm on Facebook, on Twitter, under Shea Coulee, Miss Coulee, if you nasty, on Instagram. You can find me at Berlin. You can find me Saturday at the Naughty Little Cabaret, and you can also catch me um, as a co-host on the Tony Soto Show, which is a weekly podcast that I do as well. It's available on SoundCloud and iTunes and at the thetonysotoshow.com, where we basically talk about the same bullshit that you guys do. <laughs> it's a much better show. But there's show. a lesbian. There's a lesbian on that one. That's what changes it. I got it. a lesbian coming we on Monday. We got the lesbian. Per- oh, Mo? Yeah. Was she, was she a queer com- yeah, queer listen, comedy? Yeah. Listen was, to yeah. the Tony Soto yeah. Show and not she was Lackluster. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, it's a much better. <laughs> I'm also project. trying. I'm also trying. I also want to get uh, Candy Lawrence on the show. To, she just. I mean, that that's bitch. like a like a mm-hmm. female Sam Kennison or something. Yeah. Like there is an energy there. I just. It's I'm I'm in awe. I don't make. I just kind of want. I if, just want to know where I'm she gets her drugs to do from. a podcast with her from because I feel like she'll just like I'll look at her like. What kind of strange animal well, are you? At least you know she'll scream outside of the mic instead yes. of in the mic. <laughs> You're a big fan of a lot of podcasts, and you listen like a lot of the drag queens that listen to the show. You put it, put on makeup, and you uh, listen to mostly podcasts. What pl- can you give a shout outs to the shows that you like? Um, I would say the well, obviously the Tony Soto show because I'm on the Tony Soto show. So you guys you have, you have a, like a out. life debt to the guy. Yeah, well, because <laughs> okay, here's the thing: he's like my non sexual daddy, so you know. Oh. Um, he, he's like, well, I call him a big brother because th- then that would be aging him too much and he'd be really offended by that. But, you know, he's like a really good friend that always helps me out when I'm in need. So I'm indebted by showing up to his podcast once a week. So. <laughs> he gives you money? <laughs> yeah. No, no, he doesn't. He just um, gives me other securities like diamonds and furs. Uh, but he's I would a friend to have. I would say, <laughs> I would say my other uh, favorite podcast to listen to is The Read um, by by uh, Crystal West and Kid Fury, they're they're a really great uh, duo because they're just they have no fucks to give and they give real, real honest opinions on pop culture and people and no one is safe. And I like that. I like being able to. I feel like sometimes, like when you're in a little bit of a, a, a public setting, you know, doing podcasts or being a drag queen or, you know, doing whatever, you kind of feel a sense of responsibility to be politically correct sometimes. But sometimes, you know, it's just fun to you know, talk in a microphone and run your mouth. And because these guys are basically like afraid to show their faces oh, in public. This is the them. show that read, uh, that read Sissy Spastic for dressing up as Grace Jones, right? Ooh, oh, is the, this the one? The read? Um, Wait, no, the Tony Soto show. Joke. Didn't that have? Oh, was that was that you? What? Okay, well, <laughs> you, you, you ooh, that's all. That's a story. You're, that's all another show. This. You come back. You come Girl. back because we got. I know you got to go off to Beyonce. Well, I mean, well, haven't you had Sissy on the show? We yes. had. I we asked had her about Sissy. it, she and cried. she she was like really uh, uncomfortable talking about it. I said, "Listen, you got to embrace." All the the bumps in the road of life, you well, know. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut on this podcast. <laughs> just after I was just like, I love to run my mouth and say what I want. But you know what? You it was of- just it was actually just uh, I'm actually just gonna say what I feel like saying. It was a moment where she didn't check her privilege and she did something that was you were uh, not having just, it. No, I wasn't having it. And Can I called a white her out. person do Grace Jones in drag? No. No. Ever. You mean like perform her music? Yes, perform her yeah, music. Yeah, of course. Emulate her look. Uh, you can dress like her. Yeah, she was definitely. trying to do the purple realness. She was yeah, actually she actually purple. did purple. She actually did like yeah because that's Muppets. okay. That's yeah. Uh, what about because she's like oh because I look like a California racer. Well, so it's fine. What about if you so, could do yeah. like have you ever seen her thing in Vamp where she's wearing the red wig and she's she's you know got her body and mm-hmm. she paints it in black? Mm-hmm. Could you paint yourself black and like leave your body white? 
Oh, Sissy did that. Is she that, did, she has d- dressed oh, up. She as did the that. vamp look. Yeah, the vamp okay. look. But okay. Yeah. Did she, but she, did she do black and then put white on it? Or did no, she, she just, just paint black? she she, she had, painted her like, face white. Yeah. She painted her face white and then you know had like the black marks on it, which is okay. The, okay. The 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 major issue that I had with this and it because people try to bring like Ruby D. If mm-hmm. you guys are familiar with Ruby I D. Know Ruby. Into I'm, it because she was doing a really extreme Kabuki style like all black with like white eyes, which really just looked like a mask, looked otherworldly, mm-hmm. you know? She wasn't trying to appropriate wasn't somebody minstrel. else's. It wasn't a minstrel. Yeah. Sissy, on the other hand, she made the poor decision to try and emulate Grace Jones and be like, I'm going to paint myself purple, you know, because if I'm purple, then, you know, it's not really blackface. But it was so, the image was really disturbing to me when I saw it. Mm-hmm. I was deeply you offended. You saw it in, for, in person. Uh, no, photo. I saw a photo and I went on Facebook and I just wrote this status and I was just like, you know, I was like some people, I feel like they're this, I don't understand this unint- because I didn't think that she was really trying to be mocking. I didn't really mm-hmm. think that that was, no, it, she, I just, she adores Grace Jones. Yeah. So she was paying tribute to her. Yeah. But, uh, there are so many more tasteful ways to do that besides, you know, trying to emulate someone's skin color because there's such a deep history of mm-hmm. mineral and blackface. And she knew that she was aware of that. I so mean, when you see like, um, Sharon Needles dressing up as RuPaul, for example, or other drag queens sort of like, uh, not just cross-dressing, but, you know, mm-hmm. crossing that gender boundary, mm-hmm. I mean, that racial boundary, and going from a place of, of power, privilege, down mm-hmm. below. Because, like, I mean, well, when Sharon Needles does RuPaul, she just puts on a ball cap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like, and you <laughs> she get paints it. dark though, which I, uh, which is problematic in and of itself. And I'm not really too fond of that either, but we all know what a horrible racist she can be. So, you know, so when facts. you, when you, so when you get criticized for, you know, so similarly yeah. uh, by saying it's like, well, dress, dressing up as a woman is insulting to women and it's, it's taking your male privilege and uh, I check my male privilege though when I dress up as a woman uh-huh. because I can completely empathize with what women go through. Like I was doing my show last night at the club, and there were some people that got actually extremely inappropriate and handsy with me, mm-hmm. and it made me really, really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like really uncomfortable. People put their hands places where they didn't, need, and I did not invite it. You're like, I'm not tucked ask down there, it. you little bitch. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> I did not invite it or anything. Yeah. And I, when I do drag, I come from a place of respect for women because I. Actually Actually, I think men are the fortunate sex, and I think that women are the fairer sex. Well, so like how, they're just, how is Fausto going to do Eartha Kit and drag if he can't put on <laughs> a little dark makeup? Bitch, you can do it. I heard I got endorsement from her daughter. B. But this is the thing that, that oh, because you have one black person that's like, yeah, girl, that's all uh, right. Eartha Kit's daughter, not just one black, any black person. Bitch, I'm the she said living that. the I'm still, I'm still going to take to Facebook done. and be like Fausto. She said that Fauci does the best, one of the best, uh, the best the imitations best she ever heard. Of yeah, my he mother. does. But the thing about it is that the the thing that people don't realize is that. But so, anyways, girl, and that's <laughs> it right there. You know what I'm saying? You don't need anything more than that. And, but and you need the look. Well, people, every ever since I've been uh, able to flawlessly, I would loved Eartha Kitt and oh, had a personal flawless? relationship. <laughs> flawlessly impersonate Eartha Kitt at the young age of 18. And as I get older, my voice gets much gravelier and, and I'm able to do it. And everybody asks me to do Eartha Kit and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't look like Eartha Kit. So to me, I really enjoy doing the voice. But in, in terms of like giving this, I'm a thick and juicy kind of guy. And she was a skinny she, but her know, head was like woman. square, you I know? know. But my head's not square. Well, I mean, so girl, I don't that's know. what corsets were for. If yeah. you can help me do And she wore like kimonos realness. and stuff. She wore yeah. like, you know. There are ways to do illusions. You just got to be yeah. smart about it. Yeah. And, and Don't see Beyonce. We got to end this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We, we got to talk more about this stuff. Uh, yeah. Shea Coulee, it's a Invite me back. Just invite me back. Okay, you're on tomorrow. Okay, perfect. Wait, tomorrow? I'm going to be recovering. Hold on. I want to remind folks we can't do this podcast without your help. So if you're not a plus member yet sign up today at feastofun.com slash plus and if you don't have a feast of fun t-shirt hunties you're missing out we have the shade is strong with this one reading is fundamental shante you stay well we, you had to go but we we're gonna stick around i'm, a, I'm about to say shade away <laughs> to go see away. beyonce <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get them, feastofun.com slash store, Shea kool uh, one of the treasures of Chicago. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, girl. Oh, thank you. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Honey, you, so you're all treasure. You. Very little trash. You know I'm a little trash. <laughs> a little bit. You know. 
Shut up and get out of here. All right, well, then bye to you too, bitch. <laughs> Thank you.